Hi there, this is Anmesh from Pixel and Perfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a great day and making it a beautiful one. Today we'll rescue an image from extremely colored lighting. Now I know we did a video about it a few months ago, but then again the technology was not as good and we had to manually go in and correct stuff. But right now we have such an amazing technology that's going to recover everything brilliantly and also we'll compare it with the Photoshop version. So let's go ahead and get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you wish to go ahead and follow along using this photo, check the links in the description. First of all, we'll make a copy of the background layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Now we need to take away the color so that we can recover everything from scratch. Press Ctrl Shift U, Command Shift U. Now you can also feed the colored image into the AI that we're going to use today, more on that later. But then again, I've seen that we have had better results with the colors taken away as of now. Now simply go ahead and export it by going to File, Export, Export As. So we're going to choose JPEG here. Make sure the quality is at its highest, the scaling at 100% and then export it. Let's save it as for coloring and save. Now you need to go to this incredible AI website called palette.fm. I understand if you're concerned about privacy, you can still use the Photoshop's method, which we have discussed in this video, but it's not as accurate. Also, I want to let you know that I'm not at all sponsored, approached in any way, shape or form by this website or platform. Click on upload image. Now keep in mind, it's not completely free, but we can make it free. Here's how. So let's choose that image and click on open. You already know that, that's basic stuff. Now there are lots of different AI algorithms and different ways of coloring the photo. And you can turn on each and every one of them and they are processing and as you can see, that's a fantastic color. There are different styles you can try. There's this one, there's this one, I love that. Let's go with that. Now you can go ahead and try different kind of palettes right here. We have an entire video on this platform. You can check it out right here. And you can also click on this pencil icon right there and change the prompt which the AI is using to color the photo. Pretty fantastic, isn't it? But for right now, I'm just gonna download it now. HD is paid. You can pay them if you wanna support them and that's a fantastic thing to do. Again, I'm not sponsored, just supporting other developer. Click on download, this is the free version. This is a lower resolution, but we can apply it to the higher resolution. Let's save it. And in Photoshop, just simply drag it and drop it over the canvas. Let's drop it right over the canvas, not at the top right here, because if you do that, it will open as a different document. Now you need to adjust it. You can place it at a corner and adjust it exactly to the corners like this. Make sure everything is well aligned like this. Now one other way of doing that, if you're using the Pixel Perfect compositing panel, if it's like this, just apply it and click on adapt to selection inside of the arrangement section. Just click on that and it fits to canvas. Let me show that to you one more time. Just click on adapt to selection. And there you go, it resizes. Now this feature is basically useful when you have a selection and you want to fit your stuff to it. For example, let's make a selection like this. And if we click on adapt to selection, it fits to it. Now when you have no selection, it fits to the canvas. So click on adapt to selection and it does the job for you. Another reason to get Pixim Perfect compositing panel. I'm running out of breath. Now once you have that, as you can see, the quality is not that high, of course, but we only need the colors from it. We don't need the details from it. So change the blend mode from normal to color and just as soon as you do that, have a look, here was the before, here's the after, all the qualities come back. Let's take a look at the before and after. So here's the before, here is the after, corrected. Now there's gonna be some areas which are a little bit off but before we go ahead and correct them, let us compare it with Photoshop. So this one is Palette FM. Now let's make a copy of this and let's apply Photoshop to it by going to filter, neural filters and we're not gonna do any changes. Just apply the defaults by turning on Colorize right here. Now it has colorized, hit OK. So this is Photoshop. As you can see, the colors are all over the place. And this, my friend, is palette.fm. You can see the change right there again. So here's Photoshop. Here's palette.fm. Pretty fantastic, isn't it? Now you might think the skin color is way too harsh with palette.fm, but there were different prompts to apply different kinds of colors. So you can choose a different preset if you don't like it. So here's both of them side by side for a better comparison. I really hope Adobe makes it better in the future as well. So let's go ahead and delete the Photoshop version. And now it is time for us to correct it. By the way, I love how it has colored the sky. Just look at it. Anyway, let's create a layer at the top and name it color. And that's what we're going to change the blend mode to as well, from normal to color, because that is what we want to modify. Now simply take a brush, flow to about 20%, and you guessed what we have to do. Just zoom in, select a desirable color, like this one, hold the Alt key or the Option key, 
click to take a sample. If it's not taking a sample, make sure you choose the eyedropper tool and at the top sample all layers should be checked. Sample size 3x3 three three is fine. You don't want it to be point sample. Otherwise, you can accidentally sample a noise pixel. So let's get back to the brush. Take a sample like this and paint in areas like this. Again, make sure it's a soft round brush and now let's paint. Now, if you want a little bluer tone, you can paint the whole thing with that as well. It's up to you as to what you want out of this. Now, if you want, I was also thinking adding something to the lips. One of the easiest ways to do it is by using a solid color adjustment layer. Add a lip color right here, like red. Hit OK and change the blend mode. By the way, this is the lipstick color. <laughs> change the blend mode from normal to multiply right here. Now we only want it on the lips, so select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I to invert the mask, take the brush, white as the foreground color and just start painting. Now it may sometimes seem like you're painting the lips of a clown, but wait for it. Right now it's looking perfect. Why is it looking perfect? It shouldn't because the flow is at 20%. Make sure it is at 100%. We're gonna decrease the intensity later. Whenever you change anything to the brush settings, make sure you set it back to normal because otherwise you'd be scratching your hair and bumping your head in the wall trying to figure out what the hell has gone wrong. I have suffered many times. I don't want you to suffer. Now, since she's not playing a vampire, we need to fix this. So double click on the right hand side of the layer. We need to take it away from the bright areas because multiply is a blend mode, which darkens. So take the slide out the underlying layer from right to left. But again, it's very harsh. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on it to break it apart and take it all the way apart like this. I like this. Now, you want to make it slightly blurred. So select the mask right here. Go to the mask properties. You can double click on it. If it doesn't show up, Go to window and make sure properties is checked. Now simply increase the feather a little bit. 3.2 is okay. And then you can decrease the opacity or change the color. Double click on it and you can just modify the color according to your liking. So we're gonna keep it this way and decrease the opacity. At this moment, I'll recommend that you go ahead, take a break and then get back because you'll begin to notice some mistakes that you had missed earlier. Also, this is my excuse dialogue if I've missed something. So as you can see, the eyes are a little off. Go to the color layer, take the brush, take a sample, and then simply fix it. It's not a big deal. Similarly, right here as well, let's go ahead and fix it. Now, let's not do too much of it. Let's bring back a little bit of the redness around the corner. So let's sample a little dark red color and bring it back around the corner. Let's do that right here as well and paint the rest of the areas. There we go. That looks nice. And you can go on and on after this. You can add contrast. You can tone down the skin tones a little bit. And this, my friend, is our final result. So that is how you can use artificial intelligence to recover an image from extreme colored lighting. Much better than Photoshop's color eyes. And let's see what future holds. Maybe we'll have even better technology. All you got to do is to take the colors off, upload the image to any platform or software, get the colored image back and apply it in Photoshop and change the blend mode to color if that's of a lower resolution. And then you can create a color layer with the color blend mode to correct the colors. And that is pretty much all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. I'll see you in my next one. Thank you so much for watching. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Go!